Hello everyone, this is Scrappy Kathy, and I'm doing day 11 of the 12 days of spring scrap lifts. And that's gonna be my last one. I did day 12 um, for a different challenge. I don't think it has gone live yet, but um, I guess that'll be tomorrow. Anyway, I thought I would do this one. This one involves a little mixed media, so I've been putting it off until I could kind of gather things together for it. And this will finish. I will have done all 12. I won't have videoed all 12 of them like I have in the past, but that's just I have more going on now than I, I did then. And I'm going to be really busy this weekend because I'm going out of town next weekend and I have to get caught up on all of the videos that are due during the time that I'm away. Or I may have to miss some, so I, I'm not sure which it'll be. And I just had my, like 10 minutes ago, had my uh, COVID booster, the second booster. And I was advised at the pharmacy that um, I should drink plenty of water, so I have some water handy and that I should massage the arm and keep it moving. So I'll keep it moving <laughs> doing, doing mixed media. Okay, so here is the original. It is a, um, it's by uh, Jana McCarthy for Hip Kit Club. And she's got a photo cluster up here, a photo cluster down here. This one being maybe slightly bigger than that one. Um, <clears throat> she has a couple selfies and just a, a lots of layers of interesting textures uh, in, uh, underneath and around the photo. So I have assembled my, um, the, the, things that might or might not make up my clusters. I've just kind of assembled some things I like. And I'm using the um, March Mind the Scrap Kit uh, still, kits still. And this Distress Paint is from that kit. And I'm gonna try to use it as my mixed media. She's used a blue and I have a blue here. If this doesn't work out, I will, if I don't like it, if I, I'm afraid it'll be too vivid. I'm gonna try uh, spritzing it with some water to kind of spread it out. And I may spritz it with some white and mix it in. So we'll see. Okay, first thing I'm going to do, here's my white sheet of paper. I have some kind of uh, fluffier packaging, so it's it'll give me more of, of um, uh, I guess it'll give me a softer look. I won't have to kiss it quite so um, flatly, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to try this. I kind of want it spreading out here and, and, and up. Let's, it's kind of, um, it is kind of, dark and so uh, let's that's not gonna work let's try this i'm gonna maybe uh, spray it with some white gloss spray two totally different products but i'm hoping they don't um create too much havoc as they're being, um, as they're blending. Okay, so I'm kind of, I've got it, kind of got, an, got it uneven, and that's okay. I'll do some kind of out here to give me a little spread, and then I'm going to put this aside 
And now, it's kind of interesting because I'm getting some water reactivity that's undoubtedly due to the uh, distress paint. All the distress products have a, a water reactivity to them, and I love that. I love it. I'm going to add to it, I think, just kind of. And I also, before I dry it up, and I, I can't open that, and I bet I can't open this one either. Okay, I can. This is a mixture of some white ink and some um, diluted white um, acrylic paint. So I'm going to try drying this and hope that that water reactivity doesn't go away. Okay. It still appears to be there. And unfortunately, the prettiest part of that's gonna get covered up by the, the lower uh, cluster. I'll try to move the cluster maybe over this way and move that one that way just to kind of change that. So now I'm going to use a, the, a stencil that came in the kit and it is a rainbow and clouds and stars kind of stencil. I'm laying it down on there fully realizing that the paint is still wet and I'm just going to kind of spread this about um, knowing that it's probably gonna, I'm gonna kind of go at this angle. And maybe spread out as I get down here. I fully expect some of that color to be absorbed. up into the texture paste. Um, I've had that happen before. So I think I'm just gonna let it go with that. And that's great. I've got that lifted up. Now what I need to do is I'm gonna put the paper aside and I'm gonna wipe the texture paste off of the stencil with a wet wipe just so that it doesn't harden on there and it's gonna come off on there i guess i have a little more on there than i thought Okay, I think it's not in there, it's not chunky on there, so it should be okay for me to wait and wash it at the end of this, and I'll just kind of try to scrape some of this off my mat as well with a dry paper towel. And I'm kind of letting that dry, but because I've got all the stuff to build the uh, clusters, the photo clusters, I can do those separately um, as the paper's drying. So this is one of those designs that where that's a little bit easier than with some things that you kind of have to assemble them on the page. So now I'm gonna put this away and that over there. And I'm still not ready to bring this back, but I am gonna bring it over 
and kind of admire it. So <laughs> I, I do like it. Okay, so let's get the um, that's the alpha that I want to use. Let's get this top cluster. This is also I'm also doing this page for a dotty about flare challenge to write a letter to your younger self. And I'm not gonna write the letter on here. I have it uh, in my word processor, but I don't feel comfortable sharing it. Um, just, <laughs> I'm sure that's surprising that there's something I wanna keep private because I, I kinda live my life out out there, um, but I have a photo of myself in, I believe that was third or fourth grade. I was either eight or nine years old there. And you can see from the photo that my teeth had grown in kind of strangely and it required pulling of half the teeth because I grew two sets and then four years of braces and then my and my eyes were crossed and the surgery I had to fix my eyes are part of the reason that I'm having, um, that I have a, I think it's called a macular wrinkle. Um, that I have macular degeneration starting and progressing a little faster than they thought it would. And in addition to that, in my right eye where the surgery was, um, I have some I have this wrinkle. <laughs> so, it's bad enough to have wrinkles around around your eyes, but in your eyes, you know, is, is not something you normally anticipate. I love this paper right here. This is part of the Pink Fresh line. I think I'm gonna scooch this under. He, underneath the doily. And the, the crisscross, this lighter paper is a, um, it was a packaging for that alpha. It's also pink fresh. So, that there with maybe a little bit of foam over here on this side to make up for the fact that it's got to go over the, okay, put that there. Now I've got this little frame that I thought I could kind of scooch out. Maybe I want to do it on the other side. I'm gonna cut that and I worked so hard to cut that around that circle and I didn't do a very good job of it, but I kind of want to use it, but I don't really want, okay. And I'll, I have this flower that I'm going to put a little foam behind. that. 
I have this flare, which is just the perfect print and almost exactly the color. I like this little um, this little butterfly that I fussy cut from one of the six by six papers. So it's very small scale. And I've got texture paste all over my fingers. Okay. So nothing, everything's kind of getting that um, grit. And my sticky things aren't sticking. So let me see if I can get that cleaned off. It doesn't want to clean off. I bought the wrong kind of baby wipes, and these are not the same. They're, these are meant to be flushable, so they're the fibers much more easily um, disintegrate or deteriorate or fall apart. And the cleaner that's on them is very different from a normal baby wipe. But I've paid for them, so I'm going to use them. <laughs> and I'll just suffer through there. And the butterfly that Jana uses, it, it's a theme that she uses in her um, in her composition is an apt um, symbol or reference. It's, it's a good um, image to use here because it's kind of about how I grew out of some of the awkwardness that is depicted here. So I fussy cut these ticket images from one of the papers and then I assembled them and decided I didn't want the whole, the whole thing. So that'll go there. I'm going to cut this frame so that I can use it twice. And I still don't know where the flare is going to go, but I have an idea. I don't want to... strip that says remember and I'm going to kind of place it right up here and yes I do remember that little girl and how awkward and ugly she felt and so my letter is saying to her that um, the eyes and the teeth will get straightened and um, if I had any advice it would be to you know stop eating so much <laughs> and let's see do I want to do that there that wouldn't be bad there. Okay, so my upper cluster that's going to go right here is done. Okay, I think that's good. Let's do the lower cluster. And here I have another one of those frames, but I may just use 
the other side of that. I have a butterfly that's um, die cut from um, some papers in the collection. A couple more flowers. Uh, and I have two photos. One from um, 1970, which was after I'd had um, my eyes straightened and the braces off my teeth and all those things. It was right before marrying um, James's dad. And it's probably, I, I chose that photo because it's, probably um, the photo of myself that I like the best. The, the one that proves to me, I don't know, that I used to be all that. <laughs> and, and then this is one that was just taken a couple weeks ago. A selfie after Katie cut my hair. It's a hair selfie. Okay, so this one, the um, crisscross pattern is going underneath, and I'm going to kind of layer it. I guess it needs more tape. I'm going to kind of layer it like this, and it has windows, um, the reference being... Um, kind of looking, the window standing in for a looking glass. Um, I didn't want to get too um, soppy and metaphorical about it all, but <clears throat> I will in my private journaling. Okay, so I'll put those kind of together. Jana's only had one photo, but for my story, I'm doing two. And I'm gonna put the, the uh, doily well, let's see. I, I think I will put it so that it's partly under both, but more under this one and a little bit to this side. Partly because I have this larger circle, and I'm going to use it the same way. I had thought about putting it out to the side, but I want those windows to show. I could do it here and kind of down below and off to the corner. Let's do it that way. Oh, come on. <laughs> And I can do it under the windows. Yeah. There we go. Well, you know what? I don't want it there because that'll prevent this from going. Um, I, I don't want anything to make me push it up higher. As it is, those photos are kind of um, down a little bit low. And so I'm going to move them up. Up here here and there okay now maybe this can go there and really more off to the side like that okay and I'm gonna take the big butterfly and it will go on the paper the little butterfly will go down here Oops. 
press that down. And it's die cut out of a, um, a blue green paper that really kind of, uh, blends in with the tones in the filtered photograph. I'm going to do this flower maybe right there. And I've got this one that I'm going to kind of curl up and I will put it on a a dot and maybe kind of just put it right there. And I have my tickets, although I could use the other sides of those. I think I will do that and maybe just layer them back here like that. Okay, and I have this other ticket that I'll just kind of layer in a different place. This needs to be glued down. I thought I had the there is some tape, but it's not sticking. So hopefully I got enough glue on there to, for that to work. Okay. And let me get some glue on here. And again, I'm fighting with glue that was working perfectly before I started the video because I tested it. There, and I think I might do the flare of up in here between the two flowers. Okay, I need to make sure that I can actually insert it there. And that will kind of lift the petals on this one. Okay, I have this bit of a frame, which I think I don't need to use. I'm gonna use this um, It's part of a paper snip collection from Bramble Fox, and it's a, a little tab that you can cut out, it says noted. And I thought I might sneak that down there. And kind of have it at an angle so that you can see the little curve where the, the tab was. I'm gonna put this on some foam and mount it on the um, on the page itself. And I have one more layer that I want to add to this bottom cluster. And then we'll do the small stuff. Let me put 
something. Oh, look how pretty that is uh, when I cut it on the purple side, but it's really kind of pretty on the floral side. Um, it's a different floral from the one I'm using uh, that I fussy cut these elements out of. And I have these strips that I'll try to fit into the total composition. I've got this bit that I thought I'd stretch across the back that way, kind of at an angle. And then I have a couple more strips. I have a paper clip. Um, I'm not sure. I could use the paper clip kind of like that. And we'll see. We'll see how this turns out once I get it down on the page. Okay, so here we go. I'm kind of second guessing my butterfly here because it's purple and it somewhat clashes with this pink. So I may use it someplace where it's mostly on white. So we'll see how that, how that works out. I'll put these things back over here, all these things back. Okay, so let's mount this cluster up here. There we go. And we'll do this one over here, and I may raise it up with a couple strips of this tape, just to have a little bit of difference in the dimension um, between the two clusters. Okay, that is good. Now, I may actually use this down here rather than up on the page. I just can't, even I don't think that works. But down here where the colors are more muted, it kind of does. Okay. And I still have this frame, which I don't think I need. I have a, these strips are meant to be uh, both by the manufacturer <laughs> and by me when putting them on the page, meant to be, um, there will be a letter to my younger self, a letter to that little girl and then some comments about um, advice I might give to that girl. And then there's words of advice I would give to my two-week-old self <laughs> or two-week-ago self. Less talking, more listening. Less lazing around, more working out. And I'm lining up the little center bits there. Less judgment, more understanding. And that's probably, um, I'm 
kind of a with regards to second guessing myself. Okay, and it's picked up. There are some different colors in there, but it's kind of picked up on some of the colors that are in the pattern papers, and I don't mind that. I have this word, shine, which I was going to put out here, but I think I'll use it here. And I have... Um, this phrase, proud of you, I think I might use here. Instead of being so judgy, I need to feel more proud of having gotten through what I've gotten through. And I'm gonna use the word fearless here for this version of me, because in those days I was, I think, or at least I became um, fearless once I got through some of the things that I got through. Okay, so here's some little bramble fox um, circly bits, and I'm gonna kind of use them about the page. I use two down at the bottom and one at the top, kind of corresponding to the number of photos. And I wanna put this one up at the top, but I think I'll use it here by the flare because their colors are the same. And I love these little potty people images. And I thought I'd use those, well, maybe in the clusters, maybe right here on that flare and then maybe right here there because one of the things that I will tell this little girl is that she will meet the eyes will get fixed and the teeth will get fixed and after Yeah, <laughs> marrying the wrong guy and and having an amazing uh, little little boy who would grow up to be a strong and wonderful man. Um, she will meet her prince charming and have forty years with him, and. She was damn lucky to <laughs> damn lucky that that was so. So this is her Prince Charming. <laughs> That's what the body people represent. I will do the sequins last. Right now I'm gonna do the title and the title's gonna be Listen up, and I've got to get um, get the the letters. Out, and I'm going to put it over kind of this empty area where there isn't any stenciling. And I actually left that area open for this reason. Let me get my tweezers and put that back. And I'm actually gonna cover up 
my glue. I kind of like the look. I still am not crazy about the pink, so I'm gonna load it up with white splatters, I think. Unless it grows on me. And that has been known to happen. And The, um, the page in and of itself isn't going to, there's, there's not going to be any visible journaling that will explain um, what the title means or, or anything else for that matter. But I'll know, you and I will know. And it's it's not going to be earth shatteringly um, private, but just uh, more reflective than uh, might be okay now I need the you. I hope there's an exclamation point. If not, I might have to make one. Okay, almost there. Let's get a P. The P's in this font are fancy. But they're kind of hard to peel up. I love this font and the, um, just the, the character, I guess, of these, uh, alphas. They're pink fresh and they're, they have tails on the letters, but you can overlap them because the, the material is thin and very flexible and pliable. So it's kind of nice. Let's see if we have any punctuation. I don't see any, but I do see just a kind of a straight line here. And a couple dots. I can yank one of those. Okay, so there. I think that's good. I want to add the sequins in the areas around these. Um, these are called holy moly perspectives from Bramble Fox, spelled just like it sounds, and they come in some brand new colors. I have the coral and the um, teal here, the aqua, and I also have the black, and I love them. They add so much. They, they add um, textural interest, like, sequins kind of do and they also just kind of add a nice spark of color and i'm just putting random colors and shapes and sizes from the lovey-dovey 
mix from Spiegel Mom Scraps, which is has gorgeous colors that actually happen to be spot on perfect for this um, this collection. And I, I used it in a previous layout and someone commented on my video or one of my posts, yeah, those sequins <laughs> looks like they were made for that kit, all the, the colors. And Emma at Mind the Scrap tends to use a lot of um, kind of corally pinks and uh, teals or aquas and the, the com company logo colors are, are those kind of a pink and, and, uh, and aqua. And the only thing uncharacteristic uh, of Emma in this particular kit is how many florals, because she doesn't typically do florals. Okay, I think I'm done. Um, I'm happy with it. I think it's somewhat true to the design. I will, as I said, do some white splatters. Really trying to kind of um, downplay the intensity of that pink and but for the most part I even like that I think so I've got several different kinds of pinks in each composition including this more purpley one but there's kind of a that's purplish pink around that ticket so it's in both places so thank you for watching, and I will see you. This was kind of a finishing up the 12 days of spring scrap lifts, uh, kind of a, um, a video that doesn't have any particular uh, series to go with. But I'll be back with uh, Scrap Squad Sunday uh, tomorrow and every Sunday until the next special event. And so be sure to check out Scrap Squad's Facebook page where there's a ton more inspiration and there's a new lift at least every week unless they're in a special event like the 12 days, in which case you'll get one every day for 12 days. So it's lots of fun and there are some amazing ladies in the group. The team, um, uh, Keely and Rebecca and Sochil are just, they, they have really different styles and um, their interpretations of the lifts are always amazing. So thank you for watching. Bye.